seeing and make a decision based on that. And look, when he says that no one knows what they're talking about, he's not being rude. We don't have a, a time in history where governments have printed $5 trillion and lent it to themselves. It doesn't, there's no, there's no president here. And that, that's what he's no. saying. That we don't really know what's going to happen. We don't know if they're going to pay it back or not. I don't think they're going to pay it back. I really don't. But, um, you know, they'll have to pay some of it back. But um, how this is going to play out, we just don't know. And for the meantime, we just need to look at some charts and, and let them play out for us. AJ, I'm going to head on to uh, Lloyd last week. He talked about uh, relative currency strengths. We're going to get into that. We're going to have Jeff do four charts for us. We are not going to keep this to two hours. Oh, we have two hours. We'll keep it to two hours. Another a long show, guys. Lots of content. I hope you're enjoying your Singapore National Day. And if I if missed earlier, happy birthday, Singapore. It is cool for you guys. Lots of people in the different rooms at the moment. I can see uh, YouTube numbers are, are still really good. Um, the Facebook numbers are really good. It's nice to have people in the Zoom room as well. It's packed up in there. Uh, thanks for joining us. Enjoy this. And let's go, Lloyd. Lloyd, what do you got? Hi, Paul. Right, let me get the screen. Okay. Right, so I think little has changed for me since uh, last week. Yeah, so, but just that when I look at the chart nowadays, is that uh, doesn't seem to be much, uh, have a much strong momentum of the pairs that we, uh, that I can keep a look up for. Let me shift this thing about. Lloyd, so last you're week Lloyd, your yep. sound has been, uh, it's, it's pretty, it's, it seems just to come up, but the sound was pretty dodgy. Keep going, I'll let, you, I'll let you know how it goes. Okay. So, yeah. so last week, uh, I'm actually the most bullish about power, but I didn't really actually perform uh, really well. So this week, when I look at, I was looking at a chart, uh, Swiss seems to, su seems to suggest to me that it might have a uh, better prospects. Yeah. So it has managed to keep itself above the 108 level. So let me change to a daily chart. <clears throat> you can see that it has made a really nice bounce off. Uh, and it's still heading to 110. Now, within the same week, it bounced off the horizontal level as marked from prior, tested the 110, uh, a little bit bearish, but we can see that overall it ended higher than where it started. So uh, we just say that it's a higher low. So I'm still quite uh, optimistic about Swiss gaining strength. Yeah. So let's keep a look out for uh, strength of streets for this week. Now, since pound last week, when we look at the weekly chart, you can see that it broke it didn't have a really bullish close. Yeah, in fact, this was a high test bar. So on the daily chart, we can see that price, in fact, has tested the 130 level twice. Yeah, so Friday, it, has, uh, it tested for a second time. Yeah. So as long as it didn't break this level, I will still be rather bullish about it. Yeah, just that uh, considering that the momentum is actually waning for the time being, uh, even if there's a trade setup, I might not be trading at a full risk. Yeah, I might reduce my risk for that. Euro overall, when you look at the weekly chart, uh, it is still rather bullish. Yeah. So compared to last week, we do have a, uh, this is what I call an engulfing test bar, but it is a, to me, it's an out of context bar. Yeah, it didn't really happen at a key level, so I'm not going to pay much attention to that. Yeah. And in fact, it does have a really rather steep trend line working in its favor. Yeah. So all in all, for Euro, I'm still bullish about it. Not much changes from there. I think Aussie had a gain, gain in strength. Yeah, so when last week, we can see that uh, I was expecting it for it to actually fall all the way to 70 level. Yeah. So instead, it was actually hugging at this temporary horizontal level at markups. So now this is where things get interesting for me. Yeah. So price action to me, as long as it uh, happens in the middle of nowhere, I don't really keep a track of it. But it happened at a horizontal level at markup. And from there, I can see that I have a confluence of the MACD that it's uh, momentum is actually waning. This does suggest to me that the Aussie, uh, although it had a gain in strength this week, slight gain in strength, uh, probably it wouldn't sustain true. Yeah, it might actually have a good chance of falling back to 70 level. Kiwi, uh, as suspected from last week, it is going to be stuck in this range for quite a while. Uh, don't believe that it will go anywhere soon for the time being. And Given the this week price action, it is not so. It is a test bar, but not a rather strong one at that. So I leave it as it is. I'm still going to sell TV. Canadian currency again on a weekly chart. You can see that uh, a rather huge test bar, high test bar that occurs occurs at the 75 level. So now Kiwi, this is one of those times where I'll be really careful about uh, trading Kiwi because 
uh, it is at a strong horizontal level. It is at a trend line. Uh, at the same time, it's caught in between a temporary uh, horizontal level. So to me, this kind of price action where price is happens at the moment, especially you can see where the crossovers are. It tends to have a rather strong breakout yeah. where you actually break uh, can't say for sure until the market shows me the direction. Dollar for this week didn't really go anywhere. It's kind of, uh, when we look at a daily chart, <coughs> it's kind of still hugging the horizontal level. It doesn't really show where it, uh, it is actually heading for. Now, I do get a glimpse from actually the MACD that the histogram that it might be gaining strength. Oops. So you can see that, in fact, price has made a double bottom. Yeah. So quite possible that it might actually, uh, it might disregard this level. I'll just actually wet, take it off and head back all the way to 95 level. Yeah. So although on the current chart, I rank dollar quite low, but uh, together with the MACD and what it has shown, I do have a feeling that uh, it might actually go all the way up to 95 level. It's not a huge way, uh, but it does means that for dollar for the upcoming week, uh, it might be strengthening instead of uh, weakening for the short term. Yeah. So please bear in mind that when I do my analysis, uh, I tend to look at it at a midterm, that means from month to month basis. For short term, I really mean for the upcoming week only, that's all. And the last is yen. Uh, and as I've mentioned last week, uh, yen in fact dropped in rank. But the, the issue with rank is uh, yen is that it's going to be stuck in this level for quite some time, I suspect. Yeah. It's not going to go anywhere soon. Even on the daily chart, you can see that price does, has not made any uh, significant movement. Yeah. So it's just going to be stuck between 94 and 95. Uh, in fact, this is a very, very narrow range. So now usually where narrow range occurs, it does suggest that uh, the breakout will be much more violent when it does happen. Yeah. So for now, uh, even though I may think that yen is weak, uh, rather weak in fact, when trading this pair, I'll be watching out for any breakout movement yeah, to see uh, against any other pair if it happens. So that's all for me for this week. Mate, um, tell me, uh, what, what's, which is the strongest currency? Hey, wait a minute, did I change my mic? Just to me, for this week, I'll still be tri trying to long Swiss. Okay, and what's, what's uh, your weakest so It's actually in order, the strongest to the weakest. This will be the order that I'll be trying to trade. So, I've got some stuff on here. Um, when well, you say it's an order, these uh, these codes are not codes that we normally use, mate. So, SKY, SXY, is that uh, Swiss? Uh, the first one will be Swiss. Long Swiss is uh, BX will be pound. Yeah. Then followed by Euro. So, one, two, three. Aussie. Yeah. TV. Yeah. Canadian. DXY. Dollar. And the yeah. last will be Yen. So, uh, Swiss Yen Long is your uh, your hope for the week, right? Yeah, that's what I'll be looking out for for Swiss Yen Long if it occurs. Now, uh, I think one thing I need to clarify is that although I did mention that dollar will be, for the upcoming week will be, uh, <clears throat> I expect to rise to 95 level, doesn't mean that I'll be looking for dollar long. Yeah, overall, I'm still a trend trader. So, what I do, what, what, I, what I really mean is that while dollar will be gaining strength this week, on my side, I'll be really looking to short dollar when it ends its retracement. Yeah, that's all I'm really waiting to do. I'm, I'm not about to attempt a counter trend trade for now. Fantastic, mate. So you're going to let it retrace and look for your opportunity. And when you get your opportunity for bounce, you'll take your bounce. And, and 95 is your, your number overall at this point for where we're really looking for, right? Yeah. Mate, I really like that. I really do. Thank you very much for that. Sorry to keep you waiting for so long to get you in, mate. It's... um. Um, it's just one of those shows where when we get onto stuff, it's really hard uh, to, and uh, um, uh, it can go, it can go. It's interesting. I uh, and I haven't done as much chat as I was hoping to do amongst the rest of you guys. We'll do that for next week. Jeff, four charts. What do you got for us? Thank you very much, Lloyd. Mate, I'm going to be a euro bear.